What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. This is the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. As you can see on the screen, I'm maneuvering all the video stuff around a little bit. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat, BDGE Fantasy Football, and it's Thirsty Thursday. Every Thursday, we are hitting y'all with a mock draft done on the number one platform in all of the world, the entirety of the world, okay? That's Underdog Fantasy. And as you can see me doing this little dance up here, a little fucking finger point dance, yer, yer, yer. Uh, you can follow those instructions right there to download the Underdog Fantasy app, which is linked in the bio, and you can come draft with me. I put these drafts into our Discord channel, which you could join via patreon.com slash B-D-G-E. And then everyone joins and we could draft together. I am drafting from the 111, and this is going to be an interesting position for me because we just heard the news about Miles Sanders. And I went a little bit more in depth on the Miles Sanders whole ting ting, week to week ting yesterday. So if you want to watch that video and hear my thoughts on Miles Sanders, y'all can go do so by going back to my channel and watching that video. So I'm at the 111, which means Miles Sanders is probably going to drop to me. I joined a slow draft, didn't I? I joined a slow draft. What in tarnation? What does tarnation even mean? I just think it's funny when people say that shit. I think I joined a slow draft by accident. Is this not a slow draft? Is this not a fast draft? What is this? I thought the fast was fast. Entry, pick clock is four hours. Pick clock is 30 seconds. Sorry, guys. If you want to do a fast draft, you want to click the ones with the little Bs the little uh, without the orange clock here. That was an issue. Okay, so maybe I won't be clicking from the 111. We're going to restart this up, and we need to fill this one. Okay. Now I will repaste this into the Discord. I'm sorry. This video is an absolute shit show. I promise we'll get it together. Maybe you want to skip forward like 13 seconds because I'm going to post this in the Discord. Okay. We are on. We are bike. Throw it into the Discord. Hopefully, we get enough people to draft with us. We got four. We got five. We got six. We got seven. Look at the clout. Bitch, this is fame, not clout. Drake, let them know what it's about. We got nine. We got ten. We're waiting for three people. Okay, so we don't have ten. We have nine. I'm a fraud. I'm a farce. Okay, so once this fills up, this will be a 12-team, $3, $3 mock draft, half PPR. For those of y'all that are new to best ball, it is a little bit of a different format, but drafting is where you prepare for your fantasy football drafts you get all the good value because people are actually drafting with three dollars in their account meaning they are taking it very 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 seriously okay we're almost filled oh we are filled waiting for one more person let's go okay so this is half ppr there's only quarterbacks there's only running backs there's only wide receivers and there are only tight ends filled or or positionally filled okay what this software does is it starts the best players at each position each week. Okay, so it's one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, and one flex play. Okay, so it's a little bit different than a normal draft, but players are all still being picked around the same spot. I have the 109, half PPR, again, one quarterback league. If you have not already signed up for Underdog Fantasy, what are you doing? Literally, what are you doing with your life? Besides probably a lot of progressive, uh, productive things that you should be doing instead of doing fantasy football mock drafts. But for real, underdogfantasy.com or the Underdog Fantasy app, which is in Google and iOS, and I will link that down below so it's easier for you to get there. And once you deposit 10 bucks on there, there's going to be a little page that says, oh, referral, referral page or partner code or whatever. It's going to look like this. Okay, not good with this software still, but you'll see something that looks like this. And just throw BDGE into the partner code page. And that will let me know that y'all like these drafts. Let's talk mock drafts. The 101, Christian McCaffrey, Saquon, we're not getting cute with it. I'm sitting there at the 109, and we talked about Miles Sanders for a while in yesterday's video. So if you want my update on how I think about Miles Sanders now with this supposed week-to-week -week injury, let's, let's hop on Twitter to see if there are any updated news. That happened about an hour ago, and uh, I'm filming this on Wednesday. So anything that we hear overnight will be news to grapple with after this draft has happened. So we'll see how the running back things go off. And a lot of the times I've been preaching going running back early and running back often first two rounds, maybe the first three rounds. So every time I draft with people in my audience, which is what these videos tend to be, everyone just rips off all the players that I like. And it's really unfortunate. I really hope Clyde Edwards Hilaire falls to me here, but I know he's not gonna. And no, he did not. So I'm sitting here at the 109 and there's Miles Sanders. I'm not going to take him because I literally just talked about how the injury could be a problem. So we are going to fade Miles Sanders here. We still want a running back. 
okay, my laundry is done. I'm a dirty motherfucker, and I probably should get that. But we're gonna we're gonna pile through, and we're gonna let it sit there in its wet staunchiness. You know, it's a staunchy taking Joe Mixon at the 110, you re- or the 109. You really hate to see it. It's not something that I want to do. But it's not a super flex league. It's not a tight end premium league. And I want my running bike. So the problem with Miles Sanders, I'm not going to go in depth because, again, I went in depth in yesterday's video. I'm not even going to. We're going to go with fucking 13 straight running back. I'm done drafting with you guys. I'm done drafting with people in my audience. I can never play. I can never get the guys I want. I can never draft the team that I like because I end up convincing you that the guys I like, y'all should like. And then you take them from me and it makes me sad. And everybody in the Miles Sanders video yesterday was like, Nick, you look really, 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 really sad and really stressed out. One of those things was true. I was sad. I didn't want to see Miles Sanders get hurt. I might have cried a little bit, but I was not stressed out. I was in the middle of working out when the news dropped. So, Nick Chubb or Austin Eckler, please drop to me. So, um, so it looked like I was stressed out. I was red. I was looking a little fucking tomato. I'm also like pretty pasty, all right? So when like I start exercising or when it gets hot or something, my face gets red. Get over it. Count Chocula. Okay, Twitter. Let's see. Uh, doesn't look like anything new on Miles Sanders. So the problem I have with Miles Sanders is this. Wow, they didn't take any running backs, which leaves me with Nick Chubb sitting there at the 204, leaves me with Miles Sanders sitting there at the 204. I know all you guys, all you guys want me to take Miles Sanders right now. So you could be like, Nick, what the fuck? Everything you said yesterday, you're full of shit. And you know what? I'm not going to let you dictate the way I draft, but I'm going to take Nick Chubb. Sanders. Okay. Injury optimism is the realest thing since this Gatorade flavor being the best flavor on the market. Don't care if it's zero sugar, zero calories. Glacier Cherry, zero Gatorade is hands down the goat. And if you think otherwise, unsubscribe. On the real, Miles Sanders was considered weak. They said he's week to week. That is what concerns me. We're midway through August and they tell me it's week to week. If it was day to day, of course, I'd feel a lot better about it. But it, it, it's clockwork. Every summer we start hearing guys later in the summer later in August that are week to week. And you know what that means? They're probably entering the year at less than 100%, which puts them at a very, very high disadvantage, a very much higher, I'm just fucking peeling off words here. I know it doesn't make sense, but you're going to understand the intention behind what I'm saying. A much higher rate of re-injuring. If you step on the football field and you are not as healthy as the other guys on the football field, you will get destroyed, okay? So with Cam Newton last year, we see with Sterling Shepard, we see it with fucking everybody that steps on the field at less than 100%, gives himself a very, very high re-injury risk, okay? So that is my problem with Miles Sanders right now. We don't have a lot of info, so I'm not going to jump to optimistic viewpoints. I don't care that a beat reporter saw Miles Sanders in shorts and says, oh, he looks fine. Someone says he's week to week, and some random fucking guy is going to come out here and just tell me he looks fine, he'll be ready for week one. Yeah, you know what? Fucking sit on it. Sorry. As you can see, I get emotional about talking about Miles Sanders. So for right now, all we can do is draft based off the information at hand. Thus, I have changed my rankings in the draft guide, which you can grab through monkeyknifefight.com. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit 10 bucks. You'll get the draft guide. I move Miles Sanders down my rankings because if I was drafting right now, at this moment, as you see, I would not be taking Miles Sanders at the 107, the 108, the 109 anymore. I'd like other running backs that aren't hurt. I know I took Nick Chubb, but a concussion is a different type of hurt. 90% of, maybe not 90%, but like 75% of players end up going through the concussion protocol in a week or less, a week or fewer days, okay? So, um, or like a week and a half or fewer, I should say. So Nick Chubb, I'm not worried about Nick Chubb's week one status, okay? So Nick Chubb and Joe Mixon, those are my, my starters, my running backs that I will rely heavily on to get me my RB1 points. Now is when we can get... A little frisky. Now is when we can start targeting the wide receivers here. And I love picking at the back half of the round. You guys have not watched the Fade the Public video yet, which comes out tomorrow. And in me and Snacks and Animals Big Money Home League, we uh, we had a randomizer for our draft order. I ended up with the 110. This is breaking news. I'm actually spilling the fucking beans right now. So anyone that's in our E-Town Get Down League that watches my videos, which is probably zero people, you're going to be pissed that I spilled it. But tomorrow's video and Fade the Public uh, the little vlog portion that we end up putting out before the actual sit down at the table. We always do a little vlog each week was watching our randomized or draft spots being picked. That is a 10 team league. So I was ecstatic about the 110 because I was like, oh, I'm going to be able to get Miles Sanders. Not the case anymore. Well, we'll see. We'll see. The draft is a while away. We always draft on Labor Day Monday. So here's what we're saying. So I've, I've talked about going running back, running back early. And I'm really glad I didn't get an early pick in the draft this year because 
that becomes increasingly difficult when you have the one, two, one, 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 two, one, three. Maybe it only seems that way because I'm drafting against people in my audience and you guys take running backs at a ridiculously early rate. Uh, maybe in home and money leagues like uh, or home and family leagues, a lot you'll see a lot of drafts like this where it's Chris Godwin, DeAndre Hopkins and the quarterbacks and stuff going early, which will be good. But if you're really early in the draft and you do get to the 210, 211, 212 spot, You'll see people start reaching up for Carson, James Conner, Jonathan Taylor. Like, these are guys that I just can't get on board with. I know you guys saw a literal slow motion video of Jonathan Taylor trucking a guy while defenses cannot even play defense. They're not allowed to hit. Guys, 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 guys. If there's anything to take away from Twitter clips during preseason training camps, it's that you don't take anything away from Twitter clips during preseason training camp, okay? So we're sitting here at the 3-9, and the top quarterbacks are off the board, Mahomes and Lamar. This is where I would target them in a one-quarterback league. We have the top two tight ends off the board, so this is where I'm starting to look at um, the wide receivers, and we're about to run out of time, so I'm going to go with Juju. I think we're going to get a bounce back from Juju. I think that... Um, I think that I probably panicked and I should use the Q button a little bit more there because I always talk to you guys and I lose my train of thought and then I get suckered into taking Juju at the three nine. I'm not mad about Juju. I think he's in. I think he's going to be fine. Bounce back here, getting back into the slot with Big Ben. Uh, this will be a nice tandem of Deontay Johnson and Juju Smith Schuster. I have very very few shares of Big Ben as my quarterback. Luckily, you can get him very late in drafts and. Um, I like to diversify the revenue, as you guys know. If I know I'm not picking a guy too often, I love to uh, make sure that I am grabbing a few shares of him. So I'll probably stack Big Ben later on in the draft with Juju. I love to stack in best ball drafts. Raise the ceiling. You're trying to win this damn league. I tweeted this out about Robert Woods, too. I really like that pick at 310. I, 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 feel, I feel like that's really where he should be getting picked, even though we're starting to get spoiled. We're starting to get used to these guys... Robert Woods being at the back half of the fourth round, the early fifth round, like those days are going to be over very quickly. And I love that Gurley, Melvin Gordon, David Johnson are going off the board. You guys know that I don't like Leonard Fournette, but I'll take him here if he falls to me at the 4-4, even though I know Top Dog is going to snipe him up. I've been in some drafts with Top Dog, I think. I don't know. The name sounds familiar. I feel like he's got one running back, so he's going to shoot for Leonard Fournette because he's like the only tier that seems even remotely draftable at this point. Maybe he goes with Amari Cooper. I don't know. We're going to put Fournette in the queue. Hey, that was a good pick with Mark Andrews, actually. I really like that. Okay, so Fournette, guys, as much as I hate as much as I hate players, like I'm fine when you start to weigh the pros and cons of players, the amount of volume that Fournette can get versus, you know, them maybe sitting him, them not giving him any of the passing work because Jay Gruden's there with Chris Thompson. Like there's there's a spot to pick every guy. And Leonard Fournette seems to be a guy that I won't completely fade. In the fourth round, now we stack up Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, Leonard Fournette. Between those three guys, we're gonna get a shitload of volume. A shit load. I'm not really sure why that phrase is like a popular phrase. What does that even mean, a shit load? Sometimes people poop, do little small poops. Makes no fucking sense. Makes no sense at all. I'm not going to use the word shit load anymore. They're going to get a, what's it like a, what's a synonym for a lot? They're going to get a copious level of volume, my running backs. Okay. So I really like that. And that also gives you leverage not to have to draft late round running backs when you want to be hitting on those wide receivers later in drafts, like even, I mean, not even these mid rounds, but we're getting like the, the 10th, 11th round. I want guys like Deshaun Jackson. I want guys like Brandon Ayuk. I want guys like Nikhil Harry, Alan Lazard, Michael Pittman Jr. Like those are the guys I want. But if I already have four, four wide receivers, six wide receivers by that point, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'll just take a shitty running back. That's probably going to do shit for me and not get a shit load of volume. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be, I keep it 99. Cause I'd be lying sometimes. I love saying that. Who's yelling at me on the Twitter gram? Robert Woods tweet I put out. I hate that I have to keep moving these up and down. I'm just going to put this all the way in the corner up there. So make sure you follow those directions if you want to sign up. I'm going to put the big dogs socials up there. So make sure you're following me there if you fucking care whatsoever if that what I have to say. And we'll go back to Twitter. So I tweeted this out about Robert Woods. And I think the 310 is not off the board for picking him. I I'm pretty sure I took him at the 312 or 41 last year in a 10 team league. But I tweeted this out about Robert Woods because people always talk about Woods being a floor play. All right, a floor play. This is what I tweeted out before about injury optimism. Players who became week to week midway through August last year, August 15th or later, but their injuries were, quote unquote, not considered to be serious and would assuredly be ready for week one. Cam Newton, Nikhil Harry, Jordan Reed, Darius Geis, Anthony Miller, Kiki QT. Beautiful. Robert Woods. 
1,376 yards from scrimmage in 2018, 1,249 yards from scrimmage in 2019 in just 15 games. So he would have been over 1,300 yards in back-to-back seasons. Some guys that have never had over 1,200 yards from scrimmage or have done it once in their career. Kenny G, zero. Cooper Cup, zero. Amari Cooper, zero. Stephon Diggs, zero. Tyler Lockett, zero. Jarvis Landry, once. Keenan Allen, once. A-Rob, once. Devonta Adams, once. We talk about Woods being a floor play. But he puts up sneaky rushing numbers. 115 rushing yards last year, 150 the year before. Sean McVay and these Rams offensive plays run through the wide receivers, and a lot of them end up running the wide receivers. So Woods has like a very underrated ceiling when it comes to yardage. Obviously, the touchdowns are a concern for sure, but uh, I don't think we should only be looking at Woods as like a as like an okay floor play, case in point. So who else we got? This is like the, the premier spot four wide receivers right here. DJ Chark at the 4-9, Ridley at the 4-11, Amari Cooper falling all the way down the 4-12, huh? That is that is something to behold. I wonder why he's falling. Did I miss a report or something? <sighs> These wide receivers are going earlier and or earlier. We're getting the juice squeezed out of them. Okay, so I'm still looking at wide receivers here. Ertz is getting... Ertz keeps falling later and later, too. I'm pretty sure I got him at like the 6-11 in one of these drafts a little while ago. I just... I don't know. I don't know... Real, I don't really have the big facts to back up why Ertz is not a popular pick this year because he's put up a shitload of tarf. I can't stop saying it. Why is it ingrained into me? Great pick. Damn, I was going to take Marquise Brown there. Jay, yeah, we'll go with Cortland Sutton first to get my next wide receiver. But Zach Ertz, he was terrible at the beginning of the year last year, and then he went nuts over the second half of the season. Obviously, when most people were hurt, we expect Dallas Goddard to play a bigger role, but like he played a bigger role last year and Ertz was still balling at the end of the year. I just feel like ever there's just something there that makes you uneasy about Zach Ertz. Like he's not a big play type guy. He doesn't have the explosiveness and the yak ability that Travis Kelsey does or Mark Andrews or George Kittle. So he's like the tier below because he doesn't have the upside that those guys have, but he has that like volume. He's going to be voluminous, voluminous in the elite level of it. Uh, so... Like, if Ertz continues to fall all the way into the sixth round, like, I'm fine with it. Although, you guys know I love Darren Waller. So, I'm fine with either of those guys. I'm fine fading tight ends, too, and just grabbing, like, a few of the later round guys. Uh, that's primarily been my objective. Michael Gallup. So, we had Amari Cooper at the 412, Michael Gallup at the 512. That is interesting to me. That's that's too close for comfort. Cooper's a fourth round pick for me. Gallup is, like, a seventh or eighth round pick, in my opinion. Gallup's a guy I could absolutely be wrong uh, wrong about. I I just, like, I'm not sold on the talent level being enough to just command a shitload of targets. In Someone's going to have to do a shitload counter in this offense with C.D. Lamb coming in and Blake Jarwin actually being, like, a thing in the passing game. There you go. Zach Ertz goes off at the 6-1. Come on, Tyler Boyd. Fall to me. Top dog. Top dog. You're 0 for 1 on sniping me. Make it 0 for 2. Make it 0 for 2, baby. Make my day. Make my day, top dog. Who we got quarterback-wise? And no one I could stack up yet. Hey, good call there. Let me see what he's got there. See, like, I don't know if I would have done that without having a stack there. Like, if he was the one who took Cooper or Gallup, I like the stack there. Or maybe he's projecting to take Blake Jarwin later. But... I went in on Tyler Boyd in Tuesday's video. We were talking about the must-own later round wide receivers, which you guys should absolutely go watch that video. It's one of the better videos I've probably done this year. Uh, Tyler Boyd is just in the perfect position to smash with Joe Burrow. When we look at what Joe Burrow did at LSU last year, he targeted the slot wide receivers at a crazy, crazy rate. The air yards, the total pass attempts, the deep targets, everything, the touchdown rate was higher than 50% in all those categories going to the slot receiver. And Tyler Boyd plays in the slot at a, at a clip of 75% when A.J. Green is on the field. Now, A.J. Green, another guy who pulled the hammy. Like, I ain't saying we told you so, but hammy season is here. Hammy season is so here. I can't get, I can't stop getting tagged in, in Miles Sanders' propaganda. Okay, so Keenan Allen, you, I have no shares of Marvin Jones. I just, I don't know what it is. I just can't get on board with six-round Marvin Jones. Someone convinced me why Marvin Jones is a good pick in the sixth round. Someone has to convince me. Maybe I'm just looking at this. I mean, we have the quarterback coming back from an injury. We have Marvin Jones coming back from an injury. We have 
Wait, I got to look at his numbers. Six points, four points, seven points, one point, two points. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely someone I guess I should get some shares of in best ball because we're not going to have to choose whether or not to start him. But I, I don't know. Everyone's going nuts about how he's such a good redraft pick. Let me make sure this is in half PPR first so the numbers look a little more normal. Like, everyone's going nuts about how he's such a good season-long pick, but, like, I'm good. Like, trying to choose what weeks to start him. Like, when are you starting him in, in those first eight weeks? Eight points, six points. At that point, you're like, I'm not starting him. So you take him out. Then he goes 19. So you put him back in, nine, three. After he goes three, you're like, okay, I'm not starting Marvin Jones. Then he goes for 38. Then you start him, and then he gives you four. So you don't start him. Then he gives you 20. Like, that's the problem with guys like Marvin Jones is like when you look at it from a real human perspective, the way that you make your sit-start decisions when you have a guy that's this inconsistent in terms of production makes it very, very difficult to select a guy like him. However, if your starting lineup is very big, then he makes a little bit more sense because you don't really have to deal with the sit-start. If you have three wide receivers and then two flex plays, he's going to be in one of those starting lineups every week. But if you play like two wide receivers, two running backs, and one flex, then he's going to be a problem for you because you actually have to choose whether or not you want to throw him into your lineup. Okay, we're coming up in four picks. We have Deontay. This guy obviously watched my video with Tyler Boyd stats because I went nuts about Deontay Johnson as well. I really recommend you guys watching that video. It's called the must-own wide receivers for late rounds. So I have three running backs. I have three wide receivers. Again, the software automatically starts the best quarterback and the best tight end in the starting lineup each week. You don't make any in-season moves. I should have prefaced this with. The best part about drafting, the best part about fantasy football is drafting. 7-6 for Mark Nicole Hardman is just... This is the same dude who went Marvin Jones. It was. I got to tell you, Dr. Uh, D. Porrell, I don't know how the fuck to say your name. I, I, I hate to shit on you because you might might or may not be in my audience. This is just an egregious draft by you. It's very egregious. Miko Hartman, Evan Silva had a great tweet the other day about Miko Hartman, including playoffs. Chiefs wide receiver Miko Hartman played 13 game last season in which both Terry Kill and Sammy Watkins were active. He drew a combined 18 targets in those 13 games. Guys, oh, fuck. Don't pick A.J. Green. Fuck. 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 Someone's got to do a, a mashup of all the times I've missed my pick and my reactions. They give me a fucking cue. They give me a cue. They give me a cue, and I don't use it. And I never learn my lesson. I never learn it. I never... I wish they just had a spot like next. So they have QB, RB, WR, TE. I wish they had a HS for fucking guys with hamstring injuries. T.Y. Hilton, AJ Green, off my board. I'm so pissed right now. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe T.Y. Hilton's back and he's the GOAT, but it ain't going to fucking happen. I'd rather have Michael, Michael Pittman, Miko Pittman. I'd rather have, I've, I've fucking gone off the rails. I've lost it. I've lost it. This video is just going downhill from here on out. I'm so pissed. I'm actually like so excited for Miko, the Miko Hardman guy to keep drafting. Like I want to see all of his picks now. I'm going to be so pumped. Am I on the clock again? Oh, fuck. I'm on the clock again. I like Julian Edelman a lot this year. He's getting wildly disrespected. For someone who was fourth in the NFL in targets last year, just the level of disrespect needs to stop. Needs to stop. Needs to stop. Needs to stop. Jared Cook still going at 115. Makes no sense. He's my he's my guy every single time. Can I stack anyone here? Not yet. Nope, because I have none of those guys. So we're going to go Julian Edelman. We will have our fifth wide receiver. Right now, our team looks like Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, Leonard Fournette, Juju, Cortland Sutton, Tyler Boyd, T.Y. Hilton, Julian Edelman. Injury optimism, geriatric optimism. Hilton lands in all of those. A.J. Green lands in all of those. Big mistakes, usually. But I like how the squad's turning out so far because we could rip off... A couple good quarterbacks. I might, like I said, stack Juju with Big Ben there. He's all the way down at 142. And then I'll probably stack another QB if I can. Maybe I'll go with like maybe I'll go with Joe Burrow, who's all the way down at 152, so I really don't have to worry about uh paying up for quarterbacks. Maybe I'll stack Julian Edelman with Cam. So a lot of ways to go here. Quarterback and then tight end. As always, I will grab two or three of these late round guys. Now, TJ Hawkinson becomes interesting too, because he came out and admitted that he was less than 100%. And I'm not a fucking mind reader, but I could pretty much tell you what's going to happen. TJ Hawkinson is going to perform less than ideal. We're all high on him now, and then he's not going to play well this year. And he's going to have some games where he limps off the field, and then a report's going to come out in 
uh, March or April next year. And he's going to say, I played with my foot that was at 50% or was less than 100% or whatever. And we're all going to do exact. We're all going to say the exact same things about TJ Hawkinson next summer that we're saying right now. But at the end of our analysis, we're just going to say, because he was less than 100%. He played on a bum foot last year. And we're going to act like we didn't have that information at hand right now. But we, but we, but we fucking do. So I'm going to take the information that we have at hand. I'm not going to be optimistic about injuries. And TJ Hawkinson, unless we continue to hear glaring reports about him at training camp about how good he looks, he's probably going to fall really far. If he starts to fall to like a tight end 15, 16 range, he'll be bike on my board. But for right now, for right now, off my board. Off my board. Off my board. What do we got? Where, who would my guy go with? Who would my fucking my boy go with? Antonio Gibson? Can't do it either. I can't do it either, man. This guy's just going straight fucking upside. The all upside team. He might get. He might finish last place, but he might finish first place. What, who, what the fuck do I know? Antonio Gibson is just, it's just, you know, we have no idea what his role is going to be. Literally none. No idea. The guy had 70 touches last year in college. Did they start him at slot wide receiver? Is he the third string running back? Does he come off the field for two and four minute drills for J.D. McKissick? It might sound ridiculous, but this is how NFL teams operate, right? It's not just throw the best player out there and let him touch the ball 20 times a game. Like they have specific roles in mind for specific players. And uh, there's a really, really high chance that Antonio Gibson just wildly disappoints this year. And it's been it's going to be because they're going to start using him in a weird way. Like Adrian Peterson is going to get most of the in between the in between the twenties tackle or um, carries. I don't think Antonio Gibson is going to get a lot of those. I, I think like he's his ceiling is going to be capped at like twelve to fourteen touches a game tops. So he makes me really nervous. D. Perel, D. Pirelli, FFX. I think I got it right there. D. Pirelli. Maybe he's Italian. Maybe he's in the mob. He's going to kill me for saying all this. That'd be nice. Let's see it. Wait, I want to guess before he makes the pick. Fuck. Uh, I was thinking about Debo. I was like all upside, but the injury, like he's going to miss the first six games. He would he would make that fucking pick. See, probably you're my favorite. If you're in the, if you watch this, can you please DM me on Twitter or email me info at bigdogsfantasy.com and I'm going to give you free access to the Big Dogs draft guide. Not that you want it because it's pretty much the opposite of everything you've done so far, but but I just want to say I love you. Okay, so we're sitting here at the ninth, and uh, oh, I like me some Brandon IU. We're just gonna rack up our skill players and just dominate, huh? Do I want to take? Do I want to take? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna fade at this point. I'm just gonna do it to be on brand. We're gonna fade uh, D Pirelli and take Brandon Ayuk here because he is exploding at camp supposedly. And I, I have very, very, very little faith in Debo Samuel starting the year outside of the pup list, which means he's going to be gone for the first six weeks, which means Ayuk will be the number one outside wide receiver in San Fran there. So you give me Ayuk, and now I've got six wide receivers, three running backs, and I don't really have to do much other work. A couple other running backs that I love at this spot, like I still like Philip Lindsay in the 10th, 11th round, I think is a smash. Um, I like Chase Edmonds a lot. Boston Scott, I think, makes sense given the Miles Sanders injury news. I know he's also injured, but he's been injured for a while, so he should be coming back relatively soon. Justin Jackson is a guy that's not getting enough love. He's going to be the RB2 here, and he's going to get a lot of early down work. Justin Jackson is going to get a lot of early down work in this Chargers offense, and you are going to be happy that you drafted Justin Jackson at pick 165. These are probably my favorite late-round running backs. I like Jared McKinnon. I like Adrian Peterson. Y'all know I like Anthony McFarlane, but I actually looked at my ownership percentages. So that's something you could do that's cool on this app. Um, so, yeah, you could draft on the website like I'm doing now, but they also have a super, super smooth app. And when you go to drafts on the bottom, they got the menu on the bottom, drafts, and then you go to completed. It gives you the ownership percentage. So right now, Anthony McF oh, Jesus is ugly. Anthony McFarlane is literally my highest owned, uh, my highest owned player. Oh, shit, I'm on the clock. So we don't need a running back right now, so I'm going to fade that. Ah, Derek Cook got sniped by me. So now we're in the 10th. Gronk and eh, Hunter Henry and eh, TJ Hawkinson is starting to fall now because people know we ain't with them shits. I'm going to go with Cam here. All the way down in the 10th round, I think, uh, in one quarterback league. I'm not worried about them using a fucking platoon. Uncle Bill knows what he's doing. There's going to be teams that buy into this shit. Like, you think teams are going to game plan for fucking Jared Stinham? 
Get the fuck out of here. Bill's playing mind games with them as usual. What movie is that from? I was like, focus, focus. You know what I should do from now on? I think a lot of you guys think I take drugs before these videos. I should, I should get together like five or six different types of drugs and I should use one of them each week. And then you guys have to guess which drug I used for the video. Probably wouldn't be that hard. It might be tough to decipher between like ecstasy and cocaine. I wonder if I have to bleep that out or YouTube's going to fucking take it out on me. Uh, I shouldn't have even said any of that. I'm sorry. Is that a good idea? I feel like that's a really good idea. A really fun idea. I don't think I would tell you that I was doing that experiment, though. I just would see if there was any comments about it. Okay. Sorry. Let's talk football. Hey, D. Pirelli goes with Chase Edmonds. I like that pick, my guy. I think 10th round Chase might be a little early, but all in all, the pick was a pick I can get on board with. People have been convincing me of Sterling Shepard, that Sterling Shepard should be the guy to buy in, in, in blue. I don't know if I I don't know if I believe that. I would rather just take Darius Slayton this late in the draft and give me the week to week upside where he might give you twenty five points in a given week, you know? You know? Emmanuel Sanders is just not a guy that I'm buying into either. This could be this could be a guy I'm wrong about. Emmanuel Sanders, I just tend to fade guys that I know are out of their prime and they're old and they're switching teams and I gotta take a pee. I gotta take a peeps. I'm serious I'm moving Justin Jackson all the way up here. He's my he's my next running back off the board. Remember how excited we were going into last season? Because people people were really arguing with me on Twitter about how Justin Jackson was going to get 50% of the work. And I was like, you stupid mother. I would never actually say that. But I was like, Austin Eckler's infinitely better as a running back than Justin Jackson is. Austin Eckler's going to get a lot more work than Justin Jackson. And I was told that that was a bad take. That's just what I was told on Twitter. This time around... We should be excited about Justin Jackson, okay? Justin Jackson, when healthy, is going to get work in this offense. Joshua Kelly is being designated to fucking clean up duties in the kitchen right now, okay? Joshua Kelly's not going to make an impact this year. I like that Damian Harris pick right there for you, Benny Blanco. As much as I liked Sony Michelle about two months ago, got to hate him now. I'm, 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 I'm unbiased when it comes to injuries, guys. If they're there, I'm fading. Like, this is where I should take Daniel Jones or Aaron Rodgers, but I'm going to fade for Big Ben. What a dumb fucking choice by me. What are the tight ends we got here? Oh, I love me some Jonu. I don't have a tight end yet. So we're going with we're going with a few of these uh, high upside, later round breakout tight ends. And then we're going to hit Justin Jackson next. I'm going to put a couple of these guys on the board. Ooh, I love me some Chris Herndon right now. Hooper deserves to be on there. Uh, do I have any Philly? I'm not really drafting Dallas Goddard much this year. Blake Jarwin, I'll diversify. Uh, Ian Thomas. So we're going to queue up a lot of guys just in case we miss on some of them. So this will probably be my order of guys. Adrian Peterson's like a lock for volume, so I kind of still like him, even though we're getting a little bit earlier and earlier on him. I got to pee again. I got to get some water, so I'll be back in a few. Yeah, yeah. So we got our boy Jay Jackson. And I did it while peeing from the app. As you can see, there was 10 seconds left, and a ghost came out of nowhere and made the pick. Lo and behold, it was not a ghost. It was I, Nicholas. Alan Lazard. Supposedly the entrenched wide receiver two there in Green Bay. <clears throat> he's interesting because his athletics tell us that he's interesting. Listening to a podcast with Matt Harmon, who does a re- reception perception. And he, he briefly went through Lazard and he said he's kind of an average route runner. He's not someone who's going to beat you at separation. But anyone who's got this size speed combo, 6'3, 225, uh, 87th percentile weight adjusted speed score, good burst score, really productive in college, almost a 30% college target share, broke out, 71st percent, uh, 71st percentile. So those are like the predictive measures. You want to see early breakout ages, you want to see a high college target share, and you want to see a guy who's built like an alpha. So the intrigue behind Alan Zard makes a lot of sense. We just have to figure out whether or not the wide receiver two in the Green Bay offense is worth rostering. Now, there was a small report on Twitter today about Devontae Adams. Supposedly, he got hurt, limped off the field, but then came back onto the sidelines with his helmet. Packers had a bit of a scare when wide receiver Devontae Adams limped off the field with an apparent leg injury. After going inside for a few minutes, he came back to the sideline, helmet in hand. I don't know what that actually means. Um... 
because literally you could have one leg and hold a fucking helmet on the sideline. So we don't know. That That's what scares me about these guys going off. Like, is it a turf toe? Because that's going to be a month. Is it a high ankle sprain? Because that's going to be two to three weeks plus lingering for two to three weeks. You know, maybe it's just a bruise. Maybe he's fucking fine. But we don't know that. So it is something to monitor there. If Adams misses time, obviously Lazard is going to see a huge bump up. Would also mean a big bump up for Aaron Jones. Because as we have alluded to many, many times, Aaron Jones is someone that benefited greatly from Devontae Adams being on the sideline in his receiving game. He got all three of his receiving touchdowns with Devontae Adams on the sideline. He averaged way more receptions, targets, and yards per game through the air when Adams was sidelined. So, again, something to monitor. And I did say on Twitter today, the NFL kickoff is, and in the Miles Sanders video, the NFL kickoff is on September 10th. Usually it's the week prior, which means that Sunday... September 13th is when the first games start. So any of these injuries happening now, they get an extra week of rest. Oh, you hate to see that, Benny Blanco. You hate, you hate, you hate to see it. He takes Darius Geis. I would argue that uh, A.J. Dillon is going to be just as valuable as Darius Geis is this year. So we still got one quarterback. Uh, we've got four running backs. We've got two tight ends. When the f- Oh, this isn't even my team. I was like, what? Skirt. Yeah, we're going to go with AP here and round out our volume. We're, we're going to round out the sh- the team name is shitload of volume. Okay. That's going to be my team name. I wish I could change my team name mid draft. So we're going to have 200 carries a week in between the 20s. That's what all my guys are going to get, pretty much. Mixon, Chubb, Fournette, Jackson, and Peterson are going to be the in, in between the 20s, 17 carry a week, guys. I'm not happy about it. This team went downhill quickly. Now, I actually don't hate this team at all. Um, a lot of floor plays, I feel like, on the wide receiver thing. Juju, Sutton, Boyd, Edelman, Ayuk. They all seem like floor plays to me. Jonu Smith, I should have taken another tight end. But there are a couple guys at the end of the tight end list that even all the way down here uh, get me a little bit excited. You have Blake Jarwin. You have Irv Smith. I don't hate Jay Sternberger for the same reason that we don't really know who the second passing option person in Green Bay is. Uh, I like. I can't believe Dawson Knox is going all the way down here. It doesn't make sense to me. It just it, it just don't make no damn sense. I also think people should take a second look at I don't know if I want to say this live on air. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to not say it live on air. Okay, so all my favorite tight ends were taken. And that leaves us with Jarek McKinnon. I don't want to take McKinnon right now. I don't think I have my second quarterback. No. So we're going to do that stack with Joey Burrow and Tyler Boyd. I like that. Okay. I like Joe Burrow in in his own right as a quarterback in, in one quarterback leagues this year. A very sneaky, sneaky level of rushing ability that he brings to the game as well as obviously a very strong arm hopefully what he did last year at LSU will translate onto the NFL field Uh, I think it will he was one of the most fun prospects to watch and he has touched all over the field again with a little bit of sneaky athleticism and you partner him up with Boyd I think him and Boyd are going to fucking make magic this year I wouldn't be surprised if Boyd pops off for 12 or 1300 yards who I'll bring up the chart I'll do it I'll done do it so Burrow's overall numbers Let me make sure I have guys in the queue. Now we're 13 picks away. We good. Burrow's overall numbers are on the top row. And then Burrow just throwing to receivers from the slot. 50% of his completions to the slot. 52% of his passing yards to the slot. 54% of his air yards. 60% of his touchdowns. His touchdown rate went up by 2.5% when throwing to the slot. Boyd is going to be that guy. And I am excited to see him get some deep balls uh, next year from burrow in the slot because burrow's extreme deadly accurate on the deep ball boyd has caught 13 of 13 catchable deep targets over the last two years doesn't get a lot of them but when he does when he does he sprinkles that pixie dust in that blunt and smokes that shit that was the drug of choice before this video the boyd blunt tyler boyd blunt thursdays thou shall forever rename remain nameless i also think Darrell henderson makes a little bit of sense too now he's dropping into the 14th 15th round 
I was not a fan of Darrell Henderson coming out. You could ch- that's on the record. I don't think he was a great prospect. I think there is a, ch- a chance that he makes a lot more noise than he's starting to get credit for based on his draft position. I, I think there's a decent chance that him and Cam Akers like split the backfield 50-50. And Darrell Henderson is explosive. So if he could find some holes or get more involved in the passing game, he could put up, he could silently put up 12 touches and flirt with like 8 to 12 fantasy points a game. I don't know why, but this theory, this thought process has started to hit me a little bit as of late. And uh, I feel like Darrell Henderson all the way down here is starting to become a decent pick. We're also hearing a lot of noise about Jarek McKinnon at camp looking like his old self. And we know in Shanahan's backfield, we just have no fucking idea what to expect. So we expect the unexpected. So don't take Mostert at the 65th pick overall. Fade Tevin Coleman if you want at the 85th pick overall. But Jarek McKinnon at the 165th pick overall, we smash that button. I like the DeAndre Washington pick. Ooh, ooh, ah. I got so hard seeing that Jacob Sanders stack with Robinson, AJ Brown. Good lord, good team, good good team over there. Good team over there, DJJ. Got sniped on my other tight end. I'll tell you what, I am. Uh, I went a little too heavy on the skill position players. Probably the ends of my team. If if the bread, the quarterback and the tight ends, the bread doesn't fall apart, then the team can do really well. Like the meats inside of it is beautiful. It's it's ham, it's salami, it's provolone, it's pepperoni. But I tell you what, we put it on like whole wheat bread. And that's what we're looking at right now. Actually, the quarterbacks aren't terrible. Maybe that's like a roll, but the bottom is a bread. You ever eaten a sandwich with two separate types of bread to close it? Now that's fucking something to think about. Dawson Knox, get on my team. The other thing to be careful of, obviously, when you're drafting in best ball, Make sure that your quarterbacks and your tight ends, since you're probably going to only going to own two or three of them, they're not on the same buys. Okay. I also don't know if anyone's actually done a study of whether or not that matters. Because if they're not on the same buy, if they're on the same buy, then you get double the chance every other week of having a really good quarterback. But you'd have to say, okay, maybe I miss out on 20 points. So you have to ask yourself, I miss out on 20 points for one week because they're both on the same buy. Over the course of the season, does having both of them start every single week offset 20 extra points i don't know i'm not going to do the math i don't know where my ti-83 calculator is so i'm not going to figure it out live on television but someone could probably figure it out for me okay so we are heading into the 16th round and i will have two more picks after this how do you decide how many players you want at each position i don't know to be honest with you i usually end up with five running backs seven wide receivers and then depending on which is the stronger of the quarterback tight end dichotomy, I will take three in those positions, if that done makes sense. I wonder how many uh, views that Miles Sanders video has already. I like doing breaking news videos on on, uh, on Twitter or on uh, on YouTube because they just get an absurd amount of views. And we're, we're going, we're, it's, listen, it's brick by brick here, big dogs, brick by brick. We've been doing this for like five years now, click by click. All right. So if we see a b- good clickbait opportunity, we take that shit and we run with it. Look at the disrespect Hunt for Renfro, Renfro starting to get. You guys act like he's not going to play the slot. He's going to play the slot this year. He's going to play the fucking slot in Oakland this year. And you guys are absurd for not thinking so. Use your, turn your brain on. Turn your, turn your fucking brain on, people. Hunter Renfro. Let's get this bread. Let's get this bread fro. I'm so annoying. I would. I, I don't know how you guys listen to my videos. Holy shit. I just put this out an hour and 59 minutes ago, and we got 5,000 views on it. Let's see all the fucking negative thumbs down and the, the bullshit comments. 98.7% like rate. That's nice. Someone's going to fucking talk shit and make me upset, though. Make me sad. Sounds like he's holding back tears. I was sad. I was sad. It was very sad. Okay. So people aren't being mean. No one's bullying me right now. I started a, a highlight on my Instagram. If you guys aren't following me, uh, again, it's over there in the top right of the video, at Nick Ercolano. started an Instagram highlight. It's called Getting Bullied on the Internet. So all the people that bully me on YouTube, I'll post the best, the best uh, YouTube comments. So if you want to be featured, you just say something really mean and or funny. I'd rather you not do that, but, but you know, everyone wants their 15 minutes. I don't blame you. 
I'd give it all back if I could. I'll tell you what. I worked out a little while ago, and I don't I don't really smell that good. I don't smell good. I smell kind of bad. When you smell yourself and you think it might be bad, that's when you know it's probably really fucking bad. Most people will say... It's the same thing with, like, haircuts. If people notice that your hair... If, they're, if someone says something to you, like, oh, you need a haircut, you're already, like, two weeks. Or no, it's probably getting bad. But once you notice it's bad, you're you're really late on it. You're, like, two weeks late. Probably the same thing goes with smell. I don't know really where I was going with that point. Okay. I re you know what I realized? Like, at the end of these videos, I stopped talking about fantasy football altogether. I just forget that we're doing a fantasy football draft. So we have Denzel Mims dealing with an injury. I like Muhammad Sanu late in these drafts. I do like Muhammad Sanu late in the drafts. I think he has a good floor over there in New England. I think uh, he was banged up last year, but now he's back and healthy, and Cam Newton likes throwing to his athletes. Muhammad Sanu will probably see five to six targets a game, so I think he's a good 16th rounder. Denzel Mims is hurt. I hate that. So, again, I'm not drafting players going to the year injured. Joshua Kelly, I think he's going to be a special teams player. Corey Davis, nope. O.J. Howard, nope. Derek Carr, love that pick. Love that pick. So we wrapped up our must-own running backs and wide receiver videos, right, rounds one through nine for both positions. I think next week's Monday or Tuesday video is going to be just a combination of must-own for quarterback and tight ends because you guys are asking about them. I'm going to give you a sneak preview. Derek Carr is going to be all the way the fuck in there. The GOAT. Antonio Brown would highly suggest against drafting him in best ball. He's going to be suspended for at least six games, probably half the year, if he does end up signing with any team that's psychotic enough to sign his psychotic ass. Will Disley, a guy I've been wrong on for like four years running, so whatever, I'm not even going to say anything because whatever I say about him is it's going to be the opposite. Brian Hill, love that pick. Todd Gurley, never Todd Gurley. That's the that's the slogan for 2020. Traquan Smith, yeah, no. He's had two years to prove that he could do anything, and now they're bringing Emmanuel Sanders, so I'm, I'm good there. I like Russell Gage. Similar to where Mohamed Sanu, uh, that analysis went, I like Russell Gage there as a slot wide receiver who should see five to six targets a game. Carlos Hyde, I guess I don't hate it because if we're being unbiased about injuries, you know, Chris Carson's coming into the year injured. Alshon Jeffrey's definitely coming into the year injured. Do not draft Alshon Jeffrey in best ball. Where are we at? Do I need to get a third tight end? Yeah, I probably do. We're going to go with Greg Olson. I feel like he might low-key be the starting tight end in Seattle this year. I hate to do it, and I wouldn't have picked that if we weren't with four seconds left on the clock. I probably would have gotten Tyrod Taylor there, and I still might with my 18th round pick, unless there's someone on the board. Should I go with a sixth running back? Not Devonta Freeman. Not any of these guys. I might take Edo Smith just out of spite to Todd Gurley. Most of the intention I have behind drafts is strictly spiting Todd Gurley. I have to post a daily reminder. I posted this daily reminder yesterday for people not to draft Todd Gurley. I'm such a fucking loser. All I do is just make memes all day and get bullied on the internet. It's out of control. Hey, don't forget to... Uh, don't forget to download the Underdog Fantasy app if you want to draft with me. If you want to do these drafts with me and you want to prepare for your fantasy draft in the best way possible, this is how you do it. You go to the iTunes store, you search Underdog, you download the fantasy app, you deposit 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 200 bucks. I'm pretty sure I did 50 bucks because you guys fucking bullied me and I got under. I actually started filming this video and I realized I had no money in my account. So it took like an extra 40 minutes. So I just restarted the video, but I had to put $50 into my account to do this. And uh, they suckered me in bad. So don't be a sucker. You, you can put $50 in. You'll be good for like 10 drafts or like 20 drafts, actually. Uh, make sure you put the, the, the code BDGE in the partner code box, okay? In the patent code box when you do. I actually look kind of like Darrell Williams, too. I'm just mumbling at this point. Uh, you probably shouldn't take Jalen Hurd, guys. No one take Jalen. I feel like uh, D. Pirelli is going to take J Jalen Hurd. No doubt in my mind. Never been so sure about anything in my life. Someone take Tyrod? No, no one took Tyrod. I love that. Do we take a running back? Nah, we're gonna we're gonna run with Tyrod. We gonna run with Tyrod. No pun intended. So that's gonna wrap up my draft, and I'm embarrassed to show you the team. I oh, you know what? It's probably like not a good sign when every time I finish a draft, I'm embarrassed to show you guys it. This is the draft board, and my team is on the right here. We are the 109. So we have Mixon, Chubb, 
Juju, Leonard Fournette, Corlton Sutton, Tyler Boyd, T.Y. Hilton, Julian Edelman, Brandon Ayuk. I really like the uh, skill position stacks I have, actually. Cam Newton, Jonah Smith, Justin Jackson, AP, Joe Burrow, Dawson Knox, Hunter Renfro, Greg Olson, Tyrod Taylor. Give me a thumbs up if you hate my team. That is the only way I'm going to make sure that this video stays immaculate and it's a complete thumbs up to thumbs down, 100% ratio. Give me a thumbs down if you love my team. Zero thumbs down. It's fucking beautiful. Okay, okay. That's going to be today's video let me big screen it for y'all let me go hollywood on y'all yeah. that's it for today's video again go download the underdog fantasy app you could use it on the website you could use it on the app you can come draft with me take a screenshot and show me that you deposited 10 bucks with my partner code and i will invite you to draft with me every thursday we do it but we we, we actually film it on wednesdays we put the video out on Thursdays so you could be famous. You could be on television. All right. That's all I got. I love y'all till tomorrow's Fade the Public episode.